Hello everyone, welcome to a Blender beginner tutorial on how to create a coffee mug. My name is Wendy. Today I'll be using Windows and Blender 2.93.3 which is the latest version of Blender at the time this video was created. We won't be using a reference image as I'm just taking the measurements from the coffee mug beside me. There are a number of methods to create the basic shape for the mug. In this video we will start by creating a cylinder which is a primitive mesh shape. Then we'll use the spin tool to create a handle and we'll finish up by creating a small rim at the bottom of the coffee mug. Before we move on, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, then please subscribe, like and hit the bell button to be notified when the next video is out. I really appreciate your support. Ok, let's start by creating a new file and select General. Blender works best with shortcut keys, so I'll activate the screencast keys on the right so you can follow along. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you need to. I'll be using a standard mouse with a middle scroll wheel button and a keyboard with a numpad for switching viewports. Ok, there's the screencast keys activated. Let's carry on. We'll start by deleting Blender's default cube. If the object is not highlighted in orange, then you'll have to hover over the object and left click to select it. Then press X on the keyboard to delete it. Next hit Shift A on the keyboard to bring up the Add menu and from here go to Mesh and select Cylinder. Before you click anywhere in the viewport, come down and open the tool Settings dialog. Let's zoom in to get a closer look at the object. To do this, I'll just roll the scroll wheel on my middle mouse wheel a few times. We're going to change the amount of vertices, the radius, depth and the cap fill type. Now we're going to change viewports, so hit 7 on the number pad to enter into the top view. I'm going to zoom in by scrolling my middle mouse wheel. We want to create the handle on the side of the mug. To do this, it's important that the edges line up correctly, so we will need to decrease the amount of vertices. Change the values to 22. We now have flat edges on the left and the right hand side to extrude our handle from. Blender's default unit setup is set to metric, so that will be fine for me. In radius, change the value to 0.042 and in depth, change the value to 0.1. We'll need to zoom in again. Just hit the period key on the numpad or scroll the middle mouse wheel. I'm holding the middle mouse button down and I'm dragging the mouse to orbit around so I don't lose the settings. The cylinder is created with closed ends, however there is an option under the cap fill type that we can select and we will create a tube. By default Blender is set to Ingon which gives a very good result, however let's select nothing and we'll create the base of the mug in the next step. Now let's start creating a little bit more geometry here at the bottom for the base. A quick tip I could have mentioned earlier. Notice as soon as you click in the viewport, the Object Operating Settings panel disappears. If you hit F9 on the keyboard, the panel will reopen. Ok, to carry on, I'm going to left click to reselect the object. Now let's add some more geometry for the base. To do this, we need to be able to edit the mess object first. So come up to the Object Mode and select Edit Mode. The easiest way to do this is to hit the tab key on the keyboard so you can toggle between the different modes. Notice everything has been highlighted. Left click anywhere on the viewport or hit Alt A on the keyboard to deselect everything as we're only going to work on the bottom edge. We want to select the whole loop of vertices so to do this hold the Alt key down and left click the mouse in the middle of one of these edges and this will select all the vertices and edges around the loop. Now we're going to extrude these edges. A quick tip, before doing this move your mouse pointer away from the object so you have more room to expand. Now press E to activate the extrude tool. This creates additional geometry. However, this time right click to confirm the operation. You won't actually see the new geometry yet as the new vertices have been placed directly on top of the original ones. 
Next we're going to scale this edge into the centre to start creating the base of the mug. Press the S key to activate the scale tool and slowly move the mouse pointer towards the centre. You can see the values as you move. You'll find the values just above the toolbar on the top left. I've scaled to a value of 0.75. Left click to confirm the operation. I'm going to orbit around by holding the middle mouse button and dragging the mouse. As always in Blender, there are a number of methods we could use to fill this empty area. As we have an even amount of vertices, we can simply use the Grid Fill tool. Come up to the Faces menu and from the menu select Grid Fill. If we hit Ctrl F, we can also open up the Faces menu and from here you can select the Grid Fill tool. That's filled the empty area with quads. I'm happy with that result. Now we're going to create a small curve to the outer edge. To do this, we'll use the Bevel tool. Come up and select Edges to switch to the Edge mode. Then press the Alt key and left click on the edge to select the loop of edges. Now you can press Ctrl B to activate the Bevel tool and slowly drag the mouse. You'll find the values at the bottom of the screen. I've created a width of 0.00171. Then scroll the middle mouse wheel twice to add some edge loops or edge cuts. Then left click to confirm the operation. Before we move on, let's check the settings. You can change the values here if you need to. We'll finish the bottom of the mug after we add the modifiers. Now we need to add some more geometry. So I'm going to add some edge loops. Hit one on the numpad to come to the front orthographic view. Hover over the mesh. Press Ctrl R. A yellow line appears where the first loop cut will be placed, which is in the center. If you left click once, you can slide the edge loop to modify the position, but we don't want to move it. Just scroll the mouse wheel to create a total of 9 edge cuts. You can view the number of cuts below. Left click once without moving the mouse, then once more to confirm the operation. Check the settings and make sure there are 9 loop cuts. Now it's time to add some thickness to the model. So come over to the Properties panel and open the Modifiers tab. As you see, there are four types of modifiers. Here under Generate Options, select Solidify. If we orbit around, we can see that Blender has already added some thickness. We'll keep all the default settings and only adjust the thickness value. Change the value to 0.004, then hit Enter. Let's have a little look. I think I'd like it a little thinner, so I'm going to change it to 0.003 and hit enter on the keyboard. That's a lot better. We're going to extrude the handle from some faces, so we have to apply this modifier first. However, before we can apply the modifier, we need to switch to object mode, so hit tab on the keyboard. Next, come over to the modify panel and press the downward arrow icon on the menu bar and choose apply. Make sure the object is selected and hit the tab key to toggle back into the edit mode. Now we have all the geometry we need to be able to create the handle. I want to keep this simple so you can all follow along. Remember at the beginning we calculated the amount of vertices we needed to make flat edges or flat faces on either side to extrude the handle from. I'm going to go to the top orthographic view so you can see which is the column of faces we're talking about. So hit 7 on the numpad. I'm going to create the handle on the right. It will be here on this column. We need to switch to our face mode, so come up and select faces. I'm going to select this face just as a temporary marker just for now. I'll orbit around by holding the middle mouse button down. Now select the second face from the top. Make sure the very top face is not selected. Hold the Shift key down and select the next one right below it. Then still holding the Shift key down, select these two. Before you move on, check that you do have these four faces selected. In the next step, we're going to use the Inset tool to create a smaller version of these faces inside the selected faces. Hit I on the keyboard to activate the Inset tool and move the mouse slightly inwards. 
I created a thickness of 0 0.0014. You can check your values up on the top left. Left click to confirm the operation. You can modify the thickness values in the settings panel if you need to. This is going to be the width of the handle. And now we're going to scale these faces down on the Z axis. Let's see what would happen if I just hit S on the keyboard to activate the scale tool. Now this is not what we want. I'll right click to disregard this operation. Come up to the pivot point menu. At the moment the pivot point is set to the medium point. We have to select individual origins before we can scale. Ok, I'll move my mouse to the side and hit S to scale, then Z so it only scales the faces along the Z axis. The scale values are on the top left. I've scaled to a value of 0.26 on the Z axis and left click to confirm the scale. You can change your values in the scale settings panel if you need to. The next step is to create a handle. We will use the spin tool to create and extrude geometry as it rotates around the position of the 3D cursor. We are only going to extrude the top two faces, so left click in the viewport to deselect everything, then hold the shift key down and reselect these two faces. Come over to the toolbar and select the spin tool. The spin tool is often called the lathe tool, it's a very powerful tool and I could do a whole tutorial on it, however I'll just keep things simple for today. On the top left you have the tool settings, from here you can modify the number of steps and select the axis to spin around. I'll leave the default 12 steps and just switch between the X, Y and Z axis. Two handles will appear, if you hover over them you will see the position and the angle the geometry will be extruded along. Keep the Y axis activated. Before we can use the spin tool, we have to place the 3D cursor where we want it to spin around. At the moment it is at the centre of the world. We need to place it right below the face we want to spin and exactly in the middle of the other faces that we are going to connect them to. Come over to the tools bar and select the 3D cursor. Hit 3 on the numpad and switch to the right orthographic viewport. I'll scroll the middle mouse wheel to zoom in. Next, left click and place the cursor on the edge, the one that's right in the middle of all the faces that we're working with. I'll zoom out for a better view. I'll press and hold the middle mouse wheel to orbit around. Now we can see that the cursor is in the correct position. Come back over to the Tools panel and select the Spin tool. Check your settings, make sure you have the Y axis selected. Hit 3 on the numpad to come to the right orthographic viewport. Make sure you still have the two faces selected. Now hit 1 on the numpad to change to the front orthographic viewport. Hover over the handles, left click and hold the button and rotate. I'm going to extrude and drag the new geometry nearly to the side of the mug. I'll leave a small space to bridge the edges together in the following step. Take the settings panel as you rotate. It should be an angle of negative 178. When you have the correct value, release the left mouse button. If you need to repeat it, just hit Ctrl Z and repeat the operation. The spin tool is still activated. So come over to the toolbox and select the select tool. This will disactivate the spin tool. We need a closer look at the handle, so I'll orbit around and zoom in. I'll also pan from side to side by pressing the shift key and holding the middle mouse button. I want to position this so we can see the four faces we're working on. Make sure the two faces on the handle are still selected. Hit X on the keyboard and delete these faces. Then press and hold the shift key and select the other two faces on the side of the mug. Press the X key again and also delete these faces. You should have two gaps where these faces were. Change to edge mode. We're going to select these two edges and bridge them together by creating faces between the edge loops. So to do this, first press and hold the Alt key and click on one of these edges to select the first loop of edges. Then press and hold the Shift and Alt key together and click on the edge of the handle. 
This will loop select all the edges. Hit Ctrl E and bring up the Edges menu and from here select Bridge Edge Loops. That's perfect, except we have an extra edge and we don't really need this edge so we can delete it. Hit the Alt key and left click on one of the edges to select the whole loop of edges. This time let's have a wee look at what happens if I hit the X key and select Delete Edges. Well, Blender deletes all the faces connected to those edges also. I hit Ctrl Z to undo this operation and hit X again on the keyboard. And this time we need to select Dissolve Edges and this will just dissolve the edges and fill in the surrounding geometry without leaving holes. I'll press and hold the middle mouse button and orbit around. And to pan from side to side, I'll hold the shift key and the middle mouse button. That's looking great, we have the basic shape of the coffee mug now. Now let's add another modifier. Come over to the properties panel, go to modifiers, and under generate, this time select the subdivision surface modifier. Come into the settings, and in levels viewport, I'm going to boost the value up to 2. Oh, maybe three for now. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. Before we move on, I'm going to turn on Adjust Edit Cage so we can see all the edges around the handle. Now come back over to the modifier and turn on Adjust Edit Cage in the menu. When the Edit Cage is turned on, you can see all the vertices and edges fit the shape of the mesh. When I zoomed in, you could see that the mesh isn't smooth. So hit the tab key to switch to the object mode. Then with the object still selected, right click and from the object context menu, select shade smooth. If you just want a basic mug shape, you can finish the tutorial here. However, if you'd like to learn a little bit more, I'm going to add some additional details. Hit one on the numpad to switch to the front orthographic view. We could tighten this curve slightly by adding an additional edge loop. Hit the Tab key to switch to the Edit mode, then hover over these edges and hit Ctrl R. A yellow line appears where the edge cut will be placed, so without moving the position, left click twice to confirm the operation. I'll do the same on the inside of the mug. I'm happy with that, so let's move on. Let's work at the bottom of the mug. I'll orbit around and zoom in and get a good position to work on. I'll start by adding an extra edge loop. This will be for the end of the rim that we're about to create. So hover over these edges and hit Ctrl R. Left click once, then slide the edge closer to the outer edges. Just a fraction. Then left click to confirm the operation. Check in the settings panel, the factor value should be 0.599 or 0.6. You can modify your settings if needed. Next come up and select face mode. We're going to create a small concave in the center. You can manually select the individual faces or hit C on the keyboard and switch to circle select. I'm going to use the circle select. You can increase and decrease the size of the circle by scrolling the middle mouse wheel, then left click to select and right click to disactivate the tool. With these faces selected, hit G on the keyboard to activate the grab tool, then Z to constrain it to the Z axis only. If we drag it too far, it will come through the opposite side of the cylinder, so just a fraction. OK, I'm happy with that. That looks good. We need to switch to Edge Mode, so come up and select Edges. OK, hold the Alt key down and left click on this edge. Make sure the whole loop is selected. Then hit the S key to activate the Scale tool and slowly drag the edges inwards. Notice how the rim is starting to form as the edges tighten. When you're happy with the position, left click to confirm the operation. I'm going to change the shading. At the moment, Blender is set to the viewport shading. Click on the downward arrow and open the Mac Caps tab. Then left click on the sphere to open the menu. There are quite a few Mac Caps to try, However, I like the ceramic one, but all you have to do now is left click on the mat cap you prefer. Now hit the tab key and switch to object mode and orbit around. 
Now we can get a good idea of what the end result would look like with a good texture and a good lighting setup. I like this, it's looking very good. There's just one more little tweak I'd like to do. It's an optional detail, and that is to pull a few edges and vertices just here near the handle. Position the coffee mug so you can work on the handle. Tap back into edit mode. To save time, we'll move two edges at the same time. So left click to select the top edge. Then hold the shift key down and select the top edge from the bottom part of the handle. Then we'll edge slide these edges. So to do this, hit the G key twice. Then slowly drag the edges up a fraction. We're going to repeat the same steps for the edges below the handle, only this time edge slide down a fraction. Notice how this process smooths the mesh nicely. Now we can do the same on the sides. This time we're going to switch to vertex mode. Now come over to the handle and select this vertex, the one that's right here in the center. Hold the shift key down and select the vertex underneath on the bottom part of the handle. Now hit the G key twice and move the vertices to the left, just a fraction. Now orbit around, we're going to do the same on the opposite side. Select this vertex, hold the shift key down and select this vertex. Hit the G key twice and slowly drag them out to the right hand side this time. Let's come back to our object mode. And we're finished. Now that's looking very good indeed. Let's have a look underneath. There's a nice rim. The handle's looking very good. Okay, we can finish here or why don't we just do a quick viewport render. Come up to the overlays tab and we're going to uncheck floor, X, Y and also the 3D cursor. Left click anywhere in the viewport to deselect the object. Then come up to the View menu and select Viewport Render Image. If you want to keep a copy of this image, then go to the Image menu and save it in your favorite format. We'll wrap up here. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Enjoy!